guys. Oh, uh, why isn't my chat working? Oh, that sucks. I thought I fixed the chat problem. Let me turn this down real quick. Uh, and it looks like notifications didn't go out either. So tonight is going to be a very tiny... Why does this always seem to happen? It's so fucking weird, man. I'll have to turn the chat off. Welcome, guys. Uh, not too sure how many of you guys are just passing through. But this is the supporter Q&A. And it looks like we only have 17 watching, uh, which is strange. D despite this just being a members-only chat, there's usually a decent amount of people watching and listening. So maybe the notifications haven't gone out yet. It's fucking YouTube. And you know, you guys know how sometimes that goes. Oh, you got one? Nice. Twitter and YouTube. Nice. Good deal. Maybe it's because you're mod? I don't know how it fucking works, man. It's so weird. It's so weird because sometimes I stream, you know, I start streaming and then like 45 minutes into it, people will type in the chat, uh, why did I just now get a notification and I'm basically ending the, end the, ending the stream? It's weird. Uh, but Wayfez and Psychotic, good to see you guys in the chat. Welcome. Let's hang out a little bit. Uh, so, let me see here. I have, I, I believe, like, 11, uh, 11 questions on Patreon or something like that. Um, which, and, and they're pretty long questions from what I've, uh, from what I'm seeing here. Especially you, Psychotic, but we know that. We know that. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see. Uh, all right. Here we go. Sorry, I'm trying to figure something out. There we go. What's up, Joey? Good to see you, man. All good on my end on YouTube. Nice. I always enjoy these uh, these supporter Q&As. They're always just kind of like low-key, small, intimate chit-chats. Uh, a little bit of Patreon questions. A little bit of shooting the shit with the chat. A little bit of li listening to some music. Uh, and enjoying hanging out, sipping on some... Well, today I have water. You guys know how much I drink water. I have about three 32-ounce Nalgene bottles a day. Is that too much? It might be too much. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'll have my middle kid's baseball game, so I'll have to listen later. Have a good chat. Ordered my Diarrhea Water Slide coffee mug today. Oh, no shit. Can't wait to get it. That's a cool That's cool, man. Be, uh, take a picture of it uh, and, and tweet it to me uh, if you can when you get it. That's awesome. I... Uh, I, I've been wanting to order um, one of my coffee mugs for a while. I think I want to order Let That Shit Go. I think that'd be a good coffee mug to have, you know. But I really like Diarrhea Water Slide as a coffee mug. <laughs> Alright guys, let's jump into some Patreon questions and let's jump into the chat back and forth. The first question comes from CJ Chenoweth, Patreon supporter. Uh, he asks... Uh, what do you miss most about your time in the military? Um, there's well, there's no question. The people, the the people made it. Uh, it was such a just a, a a very eclectic group of people that I served with. All walks, all walks of life, all backgrounds. You know, I served with people from all economic, uh, you know, anywhere on the economic spectrum. All walks of life from every state in the book. Um, I even served with probably half a dozen to a dozen or so um, people looking for citizenship, which was really interesting, you know, talking to them. A lot of people from Africa, a lot of people from South America even, um, like serving a country that isn't their native country in order to become um, citizens of said country. And that, I was so blown away by that. The, the opportunities that this country, you know, grants people. Um, and they're already serving. Citizens of our country, or non-citizens of the country, were serving the country that they're not even citizens of to become citizens, which is more than most citizens do. It's interesting. Uh, but yeah, so no question about it, CJ, the people. Um, just the, the interesting and deep discussions that I, I had on deployment and, and even in boot camp and just throughout my time in. Uh, everything from, every, basically, CJ, everything you're not supposed to talk about at the dinner table. That, you know, that old adage, you're not supposed to talk about religion or politics. Everything was on the table. Nothing was off the table because, you know, you're out to sea for six months or whatever and um, everything comes up. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, so yeah, the people and CJ, I, I miss the, um, I miss the structure. I miss the, I, I find civilian life to be way more, 
um, way more hectic and kind of, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, civilian life is way more rough in my opinion. Just if it, that's in that's from my own perspective, just because in my own uh, quirks, because when I had that discipline and that structure and that you must be here at this time kind of lifestyle, uh, it just made things easier for me. Somebody who has a hard time structuring and a hard time scheduling um, to have that completely laid out for you, regimented, and it was just nice, you know. So the people, uh, the, um, yeah, the structure for sure. Two things I probably miss the most, I'm trying to think. And just, and just being on the boat. Just being on the boat, man, like... Let me turn up this mute. This is a good song for this discussion. How about that? <laughs> Just being on the boat for six months, waking up every morning, staying up super late for night shift, watching the bird fly. The bird is the helicopter, making sure all the systems are correctly running. Uh, and then while the bird flies, you're sitting in lawn chairs or playing cornhole on the flight deck with your buddies, your family. Um, and... And then, like late at night, all your entire squad is, or uh, your de entire detachment, is uh, smoking big cigars on the back of the flight deck because that back of the boat is yours. You are the flight crew. You are the airmen on the frigate, and that flight deck is fucking your territory. <laughs> Just sitting there ashing out, uh, having a big wad of skull in your mouth while you're also smoking a big fat uh, Cuban cigar that you bought in Panama. Um, it was great, man. I miss, I miss it. It's, I think CJ, it's, it's one of the uh, things that I'm going to look really, really fondly on, uh, the older I get. And to tell you the truth, it's probably the thing that I'm, uh, that I regret doing more than anything in my life is getting out. I should have stayed in, you know, but it's all right. Can't, can't dwell on that. Anyway, CJ, I appreciate that question. I actually have a, a pretty long and detailed chapter and, and sorry about the mess. Uh, that um, that kind of it's called United States Navy and I, I think it's like 20 pages or something like that where I just kind of talk about my experience and what what it was like for me so anyway uh, I appreciate that man nice day out had a short easy good day and watching Hello Greta what more could anyone want a steak psychotic a steak <laughs> not yet psychotic uh, I ha I recorded another chapter so now I have four more chapters for the audiobook. And that's the biggest, that's the only reason it's not out yet. Like the paperback is done. It's already uploaded. I just haven't made it live. It's it's completed. I'm not changing it anymore. The the thing that I'm having an issue with is finding the time to sit down and record for like 45 minutes to an hour of each chapter takes about that long to record. And then, you know, I edit it down and maybe it's like 30 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Um, but the editing process takes another hour and a half and it's just you know, I need a, a block of time to devote to it. Uh, I can't wait to get, I cannot wait to get it out just because it's, it's been this thing that's, that's constantly in the back of my mind. Like God, why, you need three hours to do this chapter. You need three hours to do this next chapter. So, um, it's, uh, uh, and you know, I mean, really, it's just, it's a time thing, but I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. Uh, the next question from Patreon comes from Paul Robinson. Uh, hope you feel better. I, I was super sick. What is today? I was super sick last, the tail end of last week. So from Wednesday till about Saturday, I was, uh, everybody in the family was puking and shitting. No fun. Uh, I've just read the news about Peter Mayhew and it's actually got me a little, it's, oh, it's actually got me a little. Uh, and it's made me think about my first ever interaction with Star Wars. And it was buying a Chewbacca figure and R2. Uh, do I need to scroll up a little bit? Yeah, let me scroll up a little bit here so you guys can read it. Uh, and R2. The shop only had those... Oops, I passed it. Only had those two. I'd never heard of Star Wars as this was a few months before its release. Oh, interesting. In the UK. So I bought both. So my question... Where did your Star Wars journey begin? My best to the family as always, loving the content still. Keep it coming, good man. Well, thank you so much. Paul Robinson is one of the, I don't know, uh, not oldest in terms of age, but 
oldest viewers of Hello Greedo that I can remember. It's crazy, and it's 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 good to see us still around, man. It's hard to believe that uh, this journey has has uh, has come this far, um, and I'm still having fun doing it. You know, that's what it's all about. I'm not chasing any goal. I'm not trying to get big beefy numbers i literally just my only goal on here is just to have fun uh and i you know that's that's all that i've ever wanted from this you know so it's been a fun journey uh so where did my star wars journey begin paul um you know i i uh golly truthfully i i I don't have a memory before before Star Wars was in my life. It's it's like I guess, you know, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, there's probably things in everybody's life where where it's just always been there. It's always been there. And you don't know when you first were introduced to it, right? Um I have no idea when I was first introduced to Star Wars. I have no idea when my journey began. Um, I mean, obviously, I have a feeling that my dad showed me the movies when I was super young. I don't even know. Two, three, I have no idea. Um, But like I said, I have no memories before. Like, Star Wars has just been in my life for so long that I don't remember ever seeing it for the first time. It's just like it was just ingrained in me from birth, you know? Um, So, but that being said... grow Yeah, like, growing up, Star Wars was just always there. Whether it was me... Play, you know, obviously playing with all the action figures or uh, the the Super Nintendo games is kind of where I started playing Star Wars games. The Super, like Empire Strikes Back, Super Star Wars. I think those were probably some of my first Star Wars games that I ever played, I would say. Um, and then just kind of, you know, buying that Star Wars card trader, trading game. What was it called? Collectible trading game? Collectible card game or something like that? Not knowing how to play it, but I just love the artwork. Just that kind of shit, you know? So, the journey never had a beginning that I can remember. It's just always been there, you know? And it's never gone away. It's never gone away. It's ebbed and flowed in certain areas of my life and time frames, but it's never gone away. But yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? But, uh... So it's probably going to be the same thing for my daughter, too, you know. She's just going to be around it, uh, and she's probably going to see it at a very young age. It's just going to always be a thing that she's seen, you know, from a super, super, super uh, young age. Anyway, Paul, I appreciate that, man. Uh, And thanks for sticking around all these years. Let me take a quick sip of water. Is the music too loud? Should I turn it down? All right. Uh, The next question comes from Ari. Uh, Pavir? Did I say that correctly? Probably not. I'm an idiot. Pavere? Pavier. Pavir. I think one of those is right. Probably not. (laughs) But Ari, thank you so much. Uh, this question comes from Ari on Patreon. Hey, Greedo, I've just joined your Patreon after years of being subscribed to your channel uh, because I think you deserve loads of support for the work you're doing, and I've always really enjoyed your content, so glad to be on board. Well, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, appreciate you supporting the channel on Patreon, uh, participating in these Q&As. And uh, Ari, I've, I've been begging Patreon to add a voice feature to, like, an, uh, an upload feed. Like, how do I put this? So, on the Patreon app, I can upload uh, photos and I think it's just photos on the Patreon app. Um, But on the computer, I can upload uh, audio and video as well. But on the phone, I can only upload pictures. And I want them to implement a system where I can record a voice memo on my phone and be able to upload it onto Patreon. Because I would do like every, maybe every day, a little voice chat kind of thing. You know what I mean? A little, uh, yeah, I don't know. But basically, what I'm saying is thank you for uh, joining the Patreon. I wish I could do more. 
um, but having a uh, like a one year and half a month old kid, oh my god. The older she gets, man, the busier and, and less time I have for all this stuff. It's fucking crazy. Uh, Ari says, "How? Uh, hope you start to feel better soon. I have a very random question for you. Uh, do you think people living on planets like Tatooine and Jakku would need to apply sunscreen? <laughs> uh, cheers, Ari. Um, Jai Wilkins, thank you so much, man. Uh, give me one second. Give me one sec, man. So, yeah, I guess... Uh, I would say so, right? That makes sense. That is a random question. I guess it all depends on the density of the atmosphere, I suppose, and, and the comp composition of the atmosphere and how much it deflects sunlight. Uh, but it seems to be a pretty goddamn bright planet. Uh, the, I, I, yeah, I guess a lot of it would have to depend on the atmosphere, right? And the deflection of UV rays and whatnot. Um, but I would say yes, there are literally two suns, so lather up. <laughs> I never thought about that. That'd be a funny video, stupid video idea. That's not a bad idea. I might, I might steal that, Ari. Make that a, a little commercial, Tatooine sunscreen. I like it. Uh, so yeah, two suns, super bright, uh, a desert... Um, the 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 sunlight can bounce off of the the sand even and burn you from multiple directions. I, I know that from living in Florida. But yeah, um, they're very very. F the, it's funny that the humans on Tatooine seem to be very very fair skinned in the super 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 desert. So maybe they migrated there recently. Maybe all the humans did. Who knows? Who knows? But, um, but Ari, I appreciate that question. You might have just given me an idea for a really, really dumb video. Which I'm going to write down right now because I just had a stupid idea. Um, alright. Tat. Sun. Screen. Nice. Anyway, Ari, thank you so much for, uh, supporting the channel. And, um, even more so than that, man. Thank you for, uh for uh, tuning in all these years. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, Jai Wilkins, thank you so much for the super chat and channel support. Uh, the first super chat and channel support of the supporter Q&A at 7.29 p.m. on Wednesday, May 8th. <laughs> Jai, thank you so much. Hey, Papa Grito, have you heard of Shirley Curry? Shirley Curry. No. Let me let me look this up. Have I? Uh Shirley Curry. The Oh, I'm gonna look into this. Let's see. Shirley Curry the gaming gamey uh, the, the gaming grandma. Interesting. I'm gonna look let's see what this is. The gaming grandma. No, I've never heard of this. That's badass. <laughs> Alright, let's see. She has a YouTube channel. Uh, if anybody is... Oh, wow. She has a shitload of subscribers. Oh, my God. She's got... She plays Skyrim a lot. That's crazy. No, I've never heard of this. She plays a lot. I've never heard of this. She's an 82-year-old gamer YouTuber, and she refers to us as her grandkids. That's really cool, man. That's sweet. Some mail, some talk. She does, like, fan mail and stuff like that. She plays Skyrim. She, it looks like she exclusively plays Skyrim. It looks like, at least. Oh, here's Deliver Us to the Moon. Oh, I forgot about that game. I wanted to check that out. Um, oh, here's the YouTube channel that I'm talking about right now. She plays some other stuff. That's really cool. Let's see what her playlists are like. So, create a playlist. Liked video. Uh, Shirley Curly saved playlists. Do, 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 do. Bookshelf. Skyrim. 
After midnight, call of... Oh, Ark? Ragnar? I forgot about Ark. Deliver us to the moon. Far Cry Primal. <laughs> nice. This is awesome, man. I'm gonna have to... I'm just... I'm gonna have to check this out when I uh, when I can hear some audio. Oh, she has a Twitter. Now I'm I'm super intrigued. This is neat. I mean, it's not like it's a crazy. I'm, well, it's neat because it's kind of an anomaly, you know. Eighty-three-year-old grandmother, Shirley Curry. That's kind of hard to say. Shirley Curry. Skyrim grandma Shirley Curry will be in the Elder Scrolls Six. The YouTube sensation will appear as an NPC. That is badass. <laughs> That's really cool. They're bringing her into the game. That's really neat. That's really neat. Anyway, Jai, thank you for bringing that uh, to my attention. Also, Greedo, she has a documentary. I saw that. I saw that. Uh, and she's being made into an... F oh, yeah. That's what I, exactly what I just read. That's really cool. I th thank you for bringing that, uh, bringing that up to me, man. I love little uh, quirky things like that on the internet. That's really neat. Shirley Curry. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, let me scroll up a little bit. Oh, shit. All right, your question was off the, the screen. I keep forgetting to scroll up. Um, the next question comes from Patreon. It comes from Devin. Godfrey. Hey, Greedo, hope you're feeling better. I recently rewatched your Star Wars Profiles Episode 5 Peter Mayhew video after hearing of his passing. Uh, do you have any favorite quotes or stories of him from documentaries or interviews uh, you would like to share with us? If not, what's your favorite Chewbacca moment in the Star Wars saga? Thanks, Devin. That's a good question. Um, nothing in particular, like a, like a story or anything like that, but I've always enjoyed... I've really always enjoyed him in interviews because he was just kind of of a lighthearted dude and he he had fun with it, you know? He didn't I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe it. Like he was Chewbacca. He was Chewbacca. Maybe when he was playing Chewbacca, he didn't exactly know what the hell he was doing. He was wearing this big suit. But he became Chewbacca. It's just... He uh, he adapt, He was... He just adapted the fandom. He, or ad adopted the fandom, rather. It was... I don't know. I really loved listening to him in interviews just because he was such a jovi jovial and kind of joyous guy. Um, Nothing stands out to me. I When I... When I made that profiles video, that's when I like went down a Peter Mayhew rabbit hole and I was just really into watching his videos and I was I would constantly just YouTube search and Google search Peter Mayhew stuff and and um, read a little bit about him. Um, uh, and then and then I wanted to order because for a long time you could go to his website, which was uh, it wasn't the Wookie Roars, does it? Or was it? It might have been. I can't remember. But he would sell uh, autographs on his website. And I always wanted to get one. I always, you know, uh, for whatever reason, I never did. And whenever I thought about getting one, I would go. And they would temporarily be, like, not selling autographs because he would be out of town or doing conventions and stuff like that. So I really regret not uh, not doing that. I'm not much of an autograph collector, but... Um, you know, when, when, as I said in my video, uh, my, my, um, Star Wars Day video, you know, when eternity, when, when forever swallows up something like that, swallows up a person like that, and you never, ever have a chance to, uh, interact with them or, uh, get, get a little memento from them even, uh, you know, you kind of regret your decisions to, to, to procrastinate or, or put those things off. But, um, but yeah, my favorite Chewbacca moment, Devin, would probably be when he is... Hmm. That's a good question. Probably when he's picking up C-3PO. It's just like... After C-3PO has just been completely uh, ripped apart in The Empire Strikes Back, he's putting them back together... 
uh, carrying him on his back. Um, C three P or uh, Chewbacca just has kind of like a I don't know a lovey dovey heart, and he's looking after his buddy. Um, everybody else finds C three PO incredibly annoying. Uh, probably wouldn't even mind three uh, PO being gone. Well, Leia Leia has some concern, but um, Chewbacca is looking after his golden shiny buddy, and uh, I don't know. That's always just been one of my favorite Chewbacca moments. But, um, yeah, I would say that's my favorite, man. But I appreciate the question, Devin. Let me scroll up here. <clears throat> Fifi Gable, thank you so much for the patronage and the question, man. Uh, Fifi says, greetings, HG. Time for another toilet. What was your, what? <laughs> Toilet? Uh, what was your motivation in writing your book? Is the wee lassie walking yet? R.I.P. P.M. R.I.P. P.M. indeed. Um, no, she's not walking yet. She uh, she is crawling like crazy. She's kind of, not really standing up, but she's um, leaning, doing like the A-frame thing almost kind of pulling up on some stuff, but then she falls on her butt. Uh, but she doesn't seem to have any interest in walking yet. I'm sure, I mean, I mean, like, as soon as she realized that she could crawl and move herself, she was a bat out of hell and all over the house. I mean, it took like a day for her to go, oh shit, I can do this? And then, pew! So I'm sure as soon as she realizes that, hey, I see all these other people walking around those two sticks, I can do that too. Pew! So I'm sure it's any day now, you know. But uh, I I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty neat. But I'm gonna be worn the fuck out. <laughs> um, oh, the motivation for writing the book, Fifi. Um, so you know, uh, I actually say it in the book itself. Let me read. Actually, let me read that little. Um, let me read that little uh, snippet from the beginning, okay? Uh, this would, this would be a good, um, sorry about the mess. So, uh, where is it? This is just maybe like the fifth page or so. Um, well, where is it? Oh, uh, writing this book was a happy accident. In 2016, I decided to enroll in two college classes that had a four-hour break between them. I was excited. Four hours of uninterrupted time to work on stuff. Hell yeah. My goal was to use those four hours to write videos and work on general channel stuff. I began writing down random thoughts, opinions, and even cataloging some of my life experiences. The idea to turn some of those writings into a book didn't come until I picked up Chris Stuckman's book, The Film Buff's Bucket List. Um, so that's basically the motivation. It was, it was, it was in 2016, like I said, and I planned on just using that time to um, just type up videos, and then when I got home, I would make the videos. But I started getting a little out there with my writing. I started talking about like social media and the implications of it, the, the negative implications of it and stuff like that, or clickbait. And I started talking about stuff that really didn't apply to Star Wars, but it was just rattling around in my brain and I wanted to put it in words. Uh, so I just started typing. And eventually I had so many random thoughts that I was like, you know what, I could, I could turn this into a book and that... Fuck. All right, can you guys still hear me? All right, if it, I'm a, it says stream resumed. Can you hear me now? Uh, okay, I'm back. All right, so I don't know, I don't know what you guys heard, but um, yeah, basically all these random thoughts that I, I started writing down that really didn't have much to do with Star Wars. Uh, I, I don't know why that happened. OBS just decided to disconnect. It was weird. Um, all these random thoughts ended up coalescing into semi-cohesive chapters. 
I guess. And uh, then it became sorry about the mess. And, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I, I liked writing it. I don't know if anybody will like reading it, but I had a lot of fun writing it. So, um, you know, even if nobody likes it, it's something that I'll always be proud of for accomplishing, you know. Something neat to, to look back on in 10 years. Who knows? All right. I'm glad uh, I'm glad the stream reconnected. Uh, oh, if anybody's watching, here's the cover art. Let me find the, the image. Um, and if you haven't seen it already, some of you probably have. Um, where the hell is that folder? I have so many goddamn folders on my computer. In the Hello Greedo folder. Um, add. There we go. That's the cover. Sorry about the mess. I like it. Paperback and audiobook, and then Kindle probably a month or so later. So I had fun. All right. The next question on Patreon comes from the movie critic dude. Good to see you, man. Hey, HG, for a question outside of Star Wars, what did you think of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer and the fact that Sonic or that Hedgehog is getting a redesign due to the criticism. For Star Wars, you're going to really like the later arcs that come with the Clone Wars, which uh, it'll be even more exciting for when Season 7 comes to Disney+. Plus, For sure, man. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard, uh, Movie Critic Dude, that a lot of people, from a lot of people, that they say that Season 6 is the best. They say that it has the best arcs. So, uh, I, haven't, I haven't started watching Season 6 yet. But uh, I think I have to still watch a couple more episodes from Season 5 until I hop into Season 6, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, man. I, I, I have three videos already recorded. Um, the, the audio for the videos, at least, already recorded. My goal tonight is to knock out one, um, maybe knock out two, and then in the morning I'll knock out the third. And then maybe Friday morning, I'll wake up super early and watch an episode of The Clone Wars. So, you know, I always feel like I have more time than I do. <laughs> now my daughter's starting to wake up really early. I, w I woke up at 5 in the morning this morning, and I was like, okay, I got about like two hours until she wakes up, which is normal. Usually wakes up 7 to 7.30. Nope, she woke up at 6. I was like, god damn it. Man, I can't wake up early enough, so maybe I'm going to have to set my alarm at 4. We'll see. But, um, uh, I did watch the trailer. It, you know, it's not really for me, but, uh, I, I've never really been that big of a Sonic fan. I never had a Sega Genesis. I never had a system. I had a Dreamcast, but I never had a Sega or a Sonic game for it. I had a Game Gear, but I'd never had a Sonic game for it either. Forgot about Game Gear. Game Gear was fun. Um, my, my, I do have an issue with the the whole redesign thing i don't i don't really understand i mean is are all it's weird it's very weird to me how some people are on board with this and going yeah we won we won we won it, it's like is every creative decision moving forward going to be dictated by some fucking twitter mob some mob of fans who think they know better than creatives sure i mean it looked goofy but it's a goofy character. What do you want? Do you want him to be like Uber Dragon Ball Z fucking anime? Not everything needs to be like that. Not everything needs to be like that. <laughs> I did. You know, I'm not saying it looks good. Uh, it looked silly and kitty, which okay. But I don't. My my issue with it is when these giant mobs of people start hashtagging the shit out of things like artistic things that's my creative things it's one thing if like a company is selling fucking bad i don't know tires and people are getting hurt but when like millions of people hashtag whatever the hashtag is or say you know change sonic this is not my sonic and then the, the, the creative people bend to the wishes of a mob? It's weird to me. Um, and it's weirder to me that people don't see how grave the implications of that trend are. I don't, I don't want my creative projects to be dictated 
by people that have no creative skin in the game. I don't want my creative projects to be choose your own adventures that are based off of mobs on the internet. I, th I, I think that is dangerous territory for the future of movies and art and music even. It's just artistic um, visions in general. But who knows? Who knows? There's a lot of things that I've disliked. But, uh, but yeah, Man of Steel was a good example. I was like, this is, uh, this is not for me. I love Superman is my favorite superhero and this is not for me. But, uh, I didn't start hashtagging about it. <laughs> but I don't know. I just do not like that f from a, f like, that, a deep-seated philosophical thing that I have in me. I just, I just find that to be extremely uh, troubling, for sure. But I appreciate that, the movie critic. Dude, I went on a little tangent there. We won! Okay. <laughs> Uh, the next question comes from John Patrick Alexander. Oh, I got to scroll up a little bit. All right, John Patrick Alexander. Let me take a quick sip. All right, John Patrick Alexander uh, from Patreon says, Hey there, what I assume is a good looking, wait, what I assume is good looking. Hope the plague pass quickly. Oh, yeah, it, it lasted about four days in the house. Uh, my daughter, you know, obviously she's like a little over one year old. And I don't think she, you know, it, it would take a little longer for her body to kind of fight it off. And it did. It, it lasted up until Monday or Tuesday, but she's she's back to normal now. Um, some of your old videos showed you out and about in Grand Old City of your current living situation. Would you be up for more nature walks in the future? Perhaps visiting a local haberdashery or botanical garden? As a side project, you could document the difficulties of living as Stormtrooper in, in today's modern world, i.e. buying coffee, catching Ubers, and paying taxes. Keep up the good work, HG. Cheers. Um, yeah, I used to do a lot more, you know, out and about stuff, uh, especially like uh, the Phantom Menace Horror Story video, which I, that's, I did that years ago now. How many years ago was that? Five years ago? I don't even know. Um, but, uh, you know, if I have an idea, I do, well, the thing is I have ideas, John. I have ideas like for a Daddy Darth series that I was going to start making over a year ago but the idea that i have would actually involve a few of my friends who are, are members of the rebel legion have x-wing pilot costumes uh and you know i haven't i just haven't got around we we both we all have kids that are like a year and a half and younger so just finding the time to w make it happen which you know we could uh but i hate bothering people <laughs> and whenever i do those things i always need help um, but, you know, I'll never say never. Uh, they just take a lot more time to shoot, a lot more coordination, uh, and require a little more, I don't know, a little, little, a, a lot of, I won't say a lot, but some, some planning and maybe sketching out certain scenes and stuff like that. So I'm not like standing in the park wasting everybody's time, you know, um, I would love to do that kind of stuff. I had a lot of ideas like that uh, before I became a dad. I wanted to shoot um, a few. I had a few ideas of scenes at a local brewery called Intuition Ale Works, and I was actually talking to one of their managers, and he was like 100% on board with me filming in there one time. And I just never got around to following up, and I never, you know, I never decided to uh, to do it. Um, life kind of gets in the way sometimes, you know. Uh, but yeah, I would love to do more out and about videos for sure, for sure. But yeah, but I appreciate that, John. Thanks for noticing those old videos. I had fun making those. Sometimes I forget about, I for completely forget about certain ones and then I rediscover them. And I was like, man, this is, this was fun. These little skits were fun. Um, 
lot of fun. But yeah. Uh, the next question from Patreon comes from Jai Wilkins, and I gotta scroll up. Let me scroll up here real quick. All right, Jai says, "Hey, Greedo, I'm coming to the end of another uni university trimester, uh, and I was." Just wondering if you have any tips on getting through it all. It's becoming so stressful and and you're, oh, you're a big, <coughs> well, first of all, Jai, that's the incorrect spelling of your, <laughs> I mean, come, you, you go to uni, try, you're, 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 you're in university. I'm just fucking with you, man. I do that all the time. Uh, you're a big kid, so you probably have some advice for me. Um, well, golly, no, <laughs> you're good, Jai, you're good. <laughs> Um, see, my adv whenever I get like, yeah, <sighs> let's see, see, I don't really experience stress. It's weird. It drives my wife crazy, cause I, I I'm a very stress free person. Everything rolls off my back. Even sit, even like sometimes serious situations. Sometimes I just like brush off or. When, when the, like, for example, you're in, you're in school right now, you're coming up to another trimester, oh, at the end of another trimester, um, rather. Uh, in the past, for me, when I was in your situation, oh, I probably wouldn't even, I wouldn't have gotten as far as you, let's just say that. Uh, I would have just been like, uh, whatever. Uh, I'll just blow it off. <laughs> so I'm probably not the best person to ask when it comes to stress and anxiety and stuff like that over things like that. Um, but if I had to give some advice, man, you know, you've been preparing for all the exams, all the things that are going to be, that are going to be popping up you, the 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 entire tr uh, semester has been leading up to this, and as long as you've been paying attention and putting in the work, then the end result will be positive. Um, if you haven't, that's when you should be stressed. But I'm assuming because you're stressed, you've been doing a good job. Because you're worried, because you have a little bit of anxiety about the end of this trimester, this this uh, part of your schooling, that means you care, and that means you've probably done everything you need to do or, or, or can do. Um, so my best advice is don't be stressed, man. You got that shit. You know you do. <laughs> you know? Um... Yeah, again, I'm probably, I, like, yeah, it drives my wife crazy, because I don't stress about shit. <laughs> uh, sorry about the mess, right? But, um, but, yeah, you know, you, uh, like I said, you've been preparing. It's all leading to this. It's all leading to the end game. Uh, and I haven't seen end game yet, so I don't know how it turns out, but I hope everybody passed their, uh, their exams and, and graduated from college. <laughs> Great advice, just don't be stressed. That, well, that's the tr that's like, easier said than done, right? Um, but yeah, I would look at it like, I, I've often, I don't know, have some confidence that you've completed everything you've needed to do, you've, uh, you've studied up, you've, you've, uh, completed your tasks and that is all university and, and college ever asks of you um, and if you do that you'll succeed you'll succeed um, but yeah you, you got it it's easy to say don't be stressed right that's what, like, I, I, I tell my wife, don't worry, don't worry. But she can't, she can't not. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I must, I would love to see a scan of my brain and just, just see why that, that stress, that anxiety, that kind of, like, worry 
section of my brain doesn't light up. I would love to know. I, I don't know. Strange. Strange. All right. Psychotic told me he wrote um, a novel. So, um, all right. Psychotic. Let me take a quick sip, of, another sip of water here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the the question tab all the way up so I can read this and everybody can see it. How about that? 454 words, psychotic. <laughs> how many words? Let me, I'm going to look at how many pages is that uh, according to my um, formatting in my book. Let's see. Uh, b -b 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 so according to the formatting... It would have been. Oh, one sec. Let's see. It would have been. F uh, about three, uh, maybe two and a half pages. Two and a half pages. Okay. Okay. Sorry for any grammatical errors. Oh, no way, man. No way. No way. All right. Let's see what Psychotic had to say. Oh, one sec, Psychotic. Let me let uh, uh, Moth's, or Christopher's um, uh, fleet membership alarm go off here. If the alarm ever goes off. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. There we go. The thing didn't pop up. Oh, it's on the other side. I'm blocking it. Shit. Uh, Christopher, thanks for becoming a member of the fleet, man. I greatly appreciate that. You've been here before. You know how it works. But uh, thank you so much, man, for uh, once again becoming a member of the fleet and supporting the channel, supporting this silly-ass Star Wars YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate that. Um, as you know, you get to participate in these uh, supporter Q&As. You get a snazzy little icon next to your name. And... You get a snazzy little role in the Discord server as well. So, got, got it back on my main account now. I accidentally signed up on my work email last month. Ah, oh, bummer. All right, glad you got that sorted out then. <laughs> but uh, all fleet members, uh, all mods right now in the chat, can you do me a big favor and welcome Christopher to the fleet? Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Uh, psychotic. Give me one sec. I'm going to read Larry's because um, it, I'm sure it's... Uh, yeah, I'm, I want to take my time and, and read this, okay? I don't want Larry to, to wait too long. Uh, Larry Banks says, You know, had Lucas' sequel trilogy happened, Legends fans would have complained that the films would not have followed some of it, not half the lore, and was retconned. Oh, oh yeah, for sure, Larry. That's a really good point. Um, uh, you know... Yeah, that, that's what's, that, it's very funny because everything that Lucas has said that he would do for the sequel trilogy is nothing like the EU. Nothing like how Legends set up post-Return of the Jedi, uh, which is hilarious. Um, and I, I wouldn't want, no matter who uh, bought the franchise, no matter who made future Star Wars movies post-Return of the Jedi, I wouldn't want them to pull ideas from the EU. Um, I mean, yeah, pull ideas, but I, I wouldn't want them to go beat by beat with stories in the EU. Star Wars isn't about being adapted from a novel. It's not about pulling stuff from video games and turning them into movies. Star Wars is primarily a big popcorn, uh, having a blast in the theater, watching it on a giant screen experience, um, and introducing new stuff. I don't want Star Wars to feel like it's being adapted from something else. Does that make sense? Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I, I, would it be a little less chaotic because Lucas would be at the helms at the helm, probably because you know he's he's the creator and people have a lot of respect for him. And um, it, yeah, it would certainly be. I would think it would be tampered down compared to what it is now. Uh, but, oh my god, retcon, retcons galore, right? Post-Return of the Jedi movies were never going to be like the EU. No matter who had it. Because when you acquire the franchise, 
You got creative people with creative ideas and visions for where they want things to go. They don't want to feel hamstrung by things that came prior. Uh, novels that came prior. Books that came prior. You don't want that. You want your creative people to be creative. Not feel like they have their hands tied, you know. Anyway. Uh, Larry, I appreciate that, man. All right, Psychotic. Here we go. Psychotic says, hey, HG, this is... The, here... <clears throat> Sorry. Hey, HG, here's my paragraph question for the month. Uh, hopefully you read it all. Well, one year... Well, one year. It has been a ride for me, definitely. You've then just gotten a baby, and I was uh, in my second semester of college stressing over my research paper. I'm glad that that was over. <laughs> sorry, guy. Sorry, man. I'm getting... <clears throat> shit in my throat. Uh, and I decided to fully support this chill guy that likes Star Wars. As the years passed, a lot of a lot has happened. In July, I got a stint of depression for not being noticed by my family, and I turned uh, a guy named Hello Greedo. You may know him. <laughs> this guy uh, has helped me through my life going through uh, the rough road called life. I then decided to try to be like him. I started to hide my identity like you do because you do. I don't want people to know my identity, uh, making the name psychotic and also getting the skull, skull ski mask uh, as a mask like you wear your stormtrooper helmet. Nice. I even remember donating probably $500 total uh, to you. Remember when I used to donate $100 a month to you? Unfortunately, I had to change to a uh, dollar a month on Patreon, but I'll never stop supporting you on YouTube just to remember what it was like a certain time ago, uh, what it was like a certain time ago, whether it be a year, two three years, etc. Uh, you always say you're just some guy or quote-unquote a goofy guy with a stormtrooper helmet, but you're more to me when my friends are being major dicks and assholes to me. I know I can turn to you for guidance and a friend. I always uh, have turned to you for guidance and I'd like to call you my mentor and a friend. Now, lo now look a year later. Uh, I like to call myself an artist. Even though I'm a bit lazy, uh, that's fine. You can be lazy, man. To getting art uploaded to Twitter, lol. Uh, I'm even making a comic also, I'm also thinking about making another comic idea. Nice. Uh, you know, laziness is fine when it comes to that kind of stuff. You don't want to rush that kind of stuff, right? That's all. I remember having um, uh, a class in, uh, what was it? High school. I remember, I think it was ninth grade or something like that. And I was working on a picture and I was drawing a picture. And I was just, truthfully, I was just being a, an asshole. <laughs> Um, to this teacher in, in, a, in a lazy way. I was drawing a picture for probably three weeks and she was like, are you ever gonna finish that? And I was like, you know, I really wanna take my time because this one's a good one. <laughs> and I, just, I was just being super lazy, but I played the like, oh, I can't rush art card. Um, and she probably just was like rolling her eyes, this stupid kid. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, which, <clears throat> Which now leads to my question of the month. I consider you a friend. I hope you consider me the same. My question is, can I count on you as a friend? Even if YouTube shuts down, even if you're on life support, uh, even if I'm a lonely shitbag, can I still consider you a friend? Thank you for everything you do, Greedo. And I mean everything you do, whether you meant it or not, it has helped me. You truly don't know how much you have helped me. I truly hope you and your family are doing well. And I wish the very best to your daughter. One day, I truly hope to get to meet the man that calls himself Hello Greedo. Here is to another year. Um, well, that's I, I really appreciate the kind words there, man. It, it's it's kind of crazy to to hear all that because um, I don't I never I expect that. I, I never expect people to to kind of get um, get guidance or or anything like that from me I, as you said as you said in in, in your write-up there uh, I always say that I'm just a goofy guy with a stormtrooper helmet and that's kind of how I view myself you know uh, if if people if you if anybody gets some kind of like I don't know some something out of something I say uh, it's totally accidental <laughs> trust me <laughs> I'm not claiming to be a guru I don't know shit about shit trust me um, but if there's some little nugget of whatever that I say that, that somebody grabs onto, that you grab onto, that you, that you find a little, I don't know, it, it, whatever, you, whatever, however you find it, that's all I could ever ask for, you know? Um, it's, uh, it's crazy to think about because what started, you know, as this little stupid thing in 2011, um seems to have inspired a lot of people 
to make their own thing, and that's... Or do do anything. Uh, not just YouTube, but I, I talk, you know... Whatever you want to do. I don't know. I think that's probably the biggest thing out of all this psychotic, is that the channel itself has... Um, I've, I've heard from a lot of people that they started a little creative project because I constantly say, you know, anybody can do this. It's, it's, anybody can, anybody can do this. You don't, nope, you don't need permission. Uh, if you have some goofy creative idea that you want to take, um, you want to go down, you want to figure out, whether it be, I mean, YouTube or, or recording an album on your phone or, I don't know, buying a food truck and whatever, changing your major to culinary studies, whatever it is. Um, I've always, you know, encouraged people to, to find um, find their own kind of thing. But I'll always be here, psychotic. I'll always be here. Um, and you said, unfortunately, well, you said, what did you say? Unfortunately, I had to change to a dollar. No, that is more... Dude, thank you so much over the year uh, that that you've been watching and supporting the channel. I have never expected anybody to support the channel. And to see uh, like a supporter like you come in and, and support the channel as you have for... I mean, you got the little um, emblem there for over a year. It, it blows me away. Absolutely blows me away. Um, so, n you know... Don't uh, it, never apologize for that. Never feel bad. Uh, I, I just appreciate that you're a viewer, that you support the channel, um, that you get something out of it. That is all. Uh, that's all I've ever wanted. You know that that people get something out of this. Uh, now it doesn't even have to be Star Wars, right? Psychotic. That's the thing. Like these live streams, these. They're, they're chit chats, and shit. Half of the questions on this Patreon uh, list haven't even be star haven't been Star Wars questions, and that's what I love about these things because these live streams pop up different questions, pop up uh, just all sorts of stuff all over the map, um, all over the place, and that that is when I I kind of really really enjoy the live streams because I don't feel like I'm stuck talking about the same shit. I hear a lot of people just mulching over the same shit, constantly making the same exact videos, constantly just saying the same shit over and over and over again. I never want to get that. I never want to do that. So these live streams are a good way for me to just talk about everything. And um, if there's some kind of like unintended guidance or unintended inspiration or unintended, I don't know, unintended thing that that somebody finds important that I say, because trust me, it's completely unintended. Like I said, I'm just running my mouth here, psychotic. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I hope, uh, I hope everything lo continues to look up for you, because, you know, I, I find that if I'm ever in a rut, I think everybody has something that they're passionate about. And if, if if somebody hasn't found their passion or something that they like doing, it could be anything. It could be jogging uh, or it could be hiking, kayaking. It could be, I don't know, playing tennis or whatever it is. I mean, it doesn't have to be physical, but anything. Um, when, some, when they find what they like, their passion and something like that, I feel like... It peps you up. So, I don't know. I don't know. But I appreciate the uh, the kind words and sentiment, man. I, I really do. Um, I uh, let me let me fix this overlay real quick. There we go. Um, and you know, I would uh, yeah. If if you're ever down, I would encourage you to. Um, Man, I, I don't even know. I would encourage you to just... I, I don't... It's it's easier said than done, right? I was going to say find something that brings you, like, 
just joy no matter what it is. But for like for me, pure joy is well obviously playing with my daughter and being around her, but everything f fades away when I like m me and my wife go kayaking or or go on road trips or, or hike and stuff like that. I really, really enjoy being outside and in the woods camping and stuff like that. That is when I am no joke at my happiest. When we're in the Adirondack Mountains yeah, hiking or, or on one of the, um, the, the lakes, what are they called? Fulton Chain Lakes. Um, that is when I'm legitimately at my happiest when we're in the cabin and just, you know, kayaking across the, the Fulton chain. Um, I don't know. Got to find, uh, got to find what, what brings you ultimate happiness, you know, uh, like Christopher just went on his, uh, his giant ass trip. He actually went on the same exact road trip that me and my wife went on. I, I think there was a little bit of variant in there, but, um, but yeah, all-time favorite trip. Fuck yeah, Chris. <laughs> All right. Let me scroll up a little bit here. But I appreciate that psychotic. Um, oh. Oh, wait. Is this... Did it skip a name, Chris, or is this you? Um... Okay, that's you. All right. I'm going to bring it up again. Let's see here. I thought it, I thought my my screenshot program has a tendency to to glitch a little bit. I thought it skipped the name. All right. The last question from Patreon comes from Christopher, who's in the chat right now. Uh, I've returned from my Utah adventure. Thank you so much for being the spark that ignited my trip plans. My girlfriend and I had a blast, and it definitely ranks up there as one of the best trips I've ever taken. Uh, it's tied between this and my Costa Rica surf trip in 2016. Nice. Uh, throughout the trip, a running joke between me and my girlfriend was, do you think Greedo was here? Nice. <laughs> throughout all the places we visited, uh, trails, hiked, and restaurants eaten at, we would joining, oh, we would joking ask each other this question. <laughs> uh, this got me thinking, I've walked where Greedo walked, I've eaten where Greedo ate. Hell, I probably even shit where Greedo shit. Do you eat? Do you think I've unlocked a new Patreon tier? <laughs> oh, man. Here's my question. I'm currently reading Claudia Gray's Master and Apprentice, and I'm loving it. It explore Qui -Gon, uh, explores the Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan relationship quite well. It got me thinking, what relationship connection would you like to see ooh, explored in novel form? Something we know about, but we haven't explored too much. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, thanks so much. Um, well, first of all, I I'm glad to hear you guys had fun. Um, I, I would love to, I would love to, I mean, if, if you're still in the chat, I would love to kind of hear what you guys did specifically and, um, uh, specifically, I, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, I'm sure you went to that brewery outside of Zion and there was a little, I believe it was an Italian restaurant outside of Zion as well. Um, in Bryce Canyon, we didn't really in Bryce Canyon we grilled burgers at a KOA campsite did you stay at all the same places that I, I recommended in my video I, or did I recommend <coughs> did I recommend places I don't think I did did I I don't think I recommend campsites I really don't think I did um oh one sec psychotic uh but man that I cannot wait to go on that trip again there's no question in my mind that eventually I will go out there again uh, I want to bring my daughter. Oh, Ferber. Yep, Ferber. Um, Ferber, and then you take a right out of Ferber, and uh, the brewery is right there. Uh, it's it's almost like it's closer to the entrance of Zion than anything. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, for the most part, I'm trying to think. We ate in Moab. We. We ate in Moab, we ate in 
Zion places. I'm, I'm thinking places other than the RV. Because for the most part, we had like sandwich meat. We made sandwiches. We made um, those indoor energy bars, as I called them. The the tortillas with peanut butter and honey and, and honey bunches of oats inside. We made everything in the RV and ate it. We grilled burgers uh, at, at campsites. We made hot dogs, all that kind of shit. Um, just a few minute walk and it was there. Did you eat at Mobia Quesadilla in Moab? Uh, uh, ooh. No, we ate at a, uh, it was a something tree. No, it was kind of like, um, kind of had like smoothies and salads and stuff like that. I can't remember what it's called. I can picture it. We sat outside. Um, but no, we didn't. It was a food truck and it was awesome. No, no, we, I, I don't remember seeing food trucks. That's cool though. Moab was fun. Moab was fun. Um, give me one sec, Chris. Give me one sec. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read uh, psychotic super chat here, and then I'll come back to that. Um, psychotic says, after all you've said, thank you. But listening, do you did you answer my question asking if I can still consider you a friend after 100 years later? 100 years later? <laughs> you know, you know a survival secret that I don't psychotic? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know this. It's it's. Uh, I, I'm kind of, maybe I'm a little like you where I, I, uh, you have a close group of friends. Um, I do too. I don't have very many acquaintances. I have friends that I've known since I was 12 or 13, um, that I'm still, you know, I still go camping with. I st well, I still go, we, we rent a cabin pretty much we try to every year we've skipped a couple of years but you know i'm sure uh, maybe I, you kind of sound like you're a lot like me where you kind of keep your your group small but yeah if you if you want to call yeah if you can want to call me that a hundred years from now <laughs> in the year 20 or uh 2119 by all means by all means psychotic 2119. Is that right? That is right. Psychotic. What the world? What's the world gonna be like? 2119. It's gonna be hot. That's for sure. What's technology gonna be like? What are our video games? Not even gonna be video games. Are they not even gonna be considered video games? Are are they gonna be? 2020. 2119. Here we come. Are they gonna be considered like? Is it just going to be considered life 2.0? Is it just going to be considered, I don't know, another another like dimension almost where people go to work in this other dimension. They go explore in this other dimension. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Hey, that's not a bad idea for a book. Oh, I guess that's a lot like Ready Player One. And there's probably a shitload of virtual reality sim. It's kind of like Matrix, right? All right, scratch that idea. That idea sucks. <laughs> but I appreciate that, man. Um, so I, I saw I completely forgot to pick up Master and Apprentice. Um, my plan, I was I was going to, Chris, I was going to read Game of Thrones after I finally finish or eventually finish Bloodline, um, which I've really enjoyed reading. But I've, I've just I haven't I don't know why I haven't picked it up in like a month. I'm sometimes, man. For whatever reason, it takes me forever to get through a book. It, maybe one month I'm just super exhausted for whatever reason. A lot of shit's going on. I just plop in bed and I don't feel like reading. I don't know why. So, and then another book I'll finish in a week. I don't know why. Um, but I need to pick that up. So, as for relationships... Um, hmm. I'm interested in... Golly. Oh, man. I was going to say Poe and the guy who gave, I can't remember that guy's name, Poe and the guy who gave Max von Sydow, right? The actor's name. And the guy who gave him that, but I, then, eh. Maybe there's already some. There's probably already some backstory there in some comics, right? I don't, but I haven't. I haven't looked into it. God, what relationships would I want to know more about?
I would, you know, the relationship, and I, I kind of, nothing really from the prequels jumps out to me, but I would love to kind of explore the relationship between Hux and Kylo. Because the relation in in the past in the sequel trilogy, I I love their relationship because Kylo is he's he's a loose cannon. He uh, he's certainly more powerful. General Hux um, is kind of like I don't I don't know a good comparison. Uh, well, my prediction in Episode Nine is that uh, Kylo kills General Hux and just automat uh, like assumes power completely. There is no question who's in charge. Uh, Hux is dead. Just a quick death. Get out of my way, kind of thing. Um, I would love to because it's almost like they butt heads. And when Snoke was alive, Snoke was like the mediator, right? Snoke was like the dad who said, "Stop arguing, kids. Get along. Stop it. Stop it." Uh, and now that Snoke is dead, I think Kylo is just going to decapitate Hux because he is just a fly on his shoulder uh, being an annoyance in his ear. Um, so I think that relationship is just kind of fun because here's General Hux who is powerful in rank only uh, and Kylo who is powerful in ability, right? So there's this structure of the First Order that kind of keeps Kylo from completely demolishing Hux while Snoke is alive at least. Uh, and now that there's not some big bad daddy running the show, um, yeah, I think Kylo is just gonna ruin him. Does that make sense? So yeah, I think that I think that relationship would be a fun uh, exploration. Um, yeah, I think I think so. Anyway, um, audiobook. Yeah, audiobook's not a bad idea. Uh, I but man. It's funny to say that I have more time to read a book than I do listen to an audiobook because it's true. Um, the only time I would ever be able to listen to an audiobook would be um, driving, and I rarely, you know, drive that often. Um, far, at least, like 15 minutes here and there. But um, yeah, I, I I have a feeling that I looked at the Game of Thrones book on my Kindle. It's like 800 and something pages. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be one of those instances where I start reading and I get like a couple hundred pages in and I just drop it. I, I don't know why I do that so often. I start reading books and I never finish them. But I want to at least give it a shot. And, Chris, more so than anything, I want eventually, eventually, to read the entire, uh, this entire series. So, when Martin releases the final book... Uh, I can kind of compare and contrast it to what's come uh, in the TV show. Because, uh, for me at least, while they were still bouncing the ideas directly from his writings, I enjoyed the show way more. Um, so, I'm curious to see where everything goes in his book. You know? Does that make sense? But yeah. But yeah. But man, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you enjoyed your trip. I'm trying to think what else. But uh, you'll have to. I don't know. I'm sure you took a shitload of pictures. If you feel like uh, tweeting, um, me a bunch of pictures. Feel free, or you don't have to waste your time. <laughs> but uh, I'd just love to see what you guys, uh, what you guys saw. But uh, all right, man. I appreciate that. All right, guys, I got to get going. Um, I'm going to pop some popcorn, uh, have a bowl of pop. Actually, shit, did I, did I finish that video? Let me look at this. Let me look at my uh, file real quick. Um, I'm pulling up After Effects. Oh, nice. Okay. Let me, uh, let me check that out. Sweet. Requested. Cool. Alright. 
All right, I got. It. Yeah, I'm gonna hop in front of the green screen real quick because I want to get this video rendering tonight. It's a stupid kind of like. Uh, it's a stupid video that looks at a very very a character. It's basically a, me looking at a character on Wikipedia and going, why why is this a thing? <laughs> One of those kind of things. So it's always fun. All right, guys. Uh, as always, thank you so much for tuning in to, to the, the, the patrons and supporters that are on right now and that ask questions on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, the channel survives because of you guys. No, no doubt about it. No question about it. Uh, to Psychotic, Larry Banks, uh, and Jai Wilkins on the supporter Q&A. Thank you guys so much for the, uh, the super chats and channel support. I greatly appreciate that on all fronts. And uh, as always... Thank you so much for tuning in. That goes for all the the, the people that are watching with uh, with, with um, uh, I guess a digital muzzle on right now. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out and shooting the shit. Not shooting the shit. Letting me shoot the shit. Uh, and uh, letting your ears hear this goofy ass stormtrooper. So, all right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. If I don't see you, uh, tomorrow is Thursday, correct? Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to do a Dark Forces 2 stream. Uh, or there's a Duke Nukem 3D Star Wars mod that I might end up downloading and playing on a stream. So if I get that working, I might do that tomorrow because that sounds fun. Uh, where is that? Where is that? That's not it. That's not it. Questions. There we go. Um, but, uh, all right, guys. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will catch you all on the flip side. See ya.